the Psalms of our teacher David the prophet and king. May his blessings be with us. Amen. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Lord, God, Saviour, and King of us all, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and return to her house. Glory be to God for ever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The third week of Kiyak, um, it talks about the visit of St. Mary to Elizabeth. And it was a blessed visit. And um, we do learn a lot of lessons from this visit. And the, the Gospel says, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, 
that the babe lived in her womb and the Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. You can see here the relationship between hearing something and being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is exactly what happened to Elizabeth when she has heard the greeting of St. Mary. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. And we ask ourselves, we have heard many things before and we haven't felt that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. And where is the problem here? Is it me that I don't have, you know, the right ears to hear? Or it could be the person who has, heard, who has talked to us, there is something wrong. And a lot of us, we pay attention to many things. We pay attention to problems, and we pay attention to gossip. We pay attention to judging others. We pay attention to the evil things. We pay attention to know the news of others and to have the curiosity of what's happening here and there. And we pay attention to, to the news in the world as well. And every time when I receive something, it does affect me. That's why the ears are so important in our spiritual life. And even the Lord in his sermons, especially the parables, he says, he who has ear, let him hear. And also the book of Revelation says, who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So it's really important for us and essential in our spiritual life to keep the ears pure. And that's why there is spiritual ears, <clears throat> and the spiritual ears has characteristics. Number one, it is open to the word of God. And it's better than offering and sacrifices. In the book of Psalms, it says, sacrifices and offering I, I did not desire. My ears you have opened. So I have to open my ears to the word of God. I have to develop the receptors to recognize his voice. I need to be sensitive to every word and every action that the Lord wants me to know about him. Adam and Eve, where we were in the garden, they used to recognize the voice of the Lord. And they used to recognize his presence. That's before the fall. But the after falling, they did recognize every evil thing from the serpent. So they gave their ears to the serpent. And here the confusion happened. That's why we have to open our ears to the Word of God, and we have to develop the receptors to know the Word of God. And this is something you need to request as well. Lord, give me ear so I can recognize your voice. The Lord has given this even to the sheep. The, sh the sheep can recognize the voice of the shepherd. Something they did learn and they did have. Even they couldn't see him, just hearing his voice. How about us, that even we were able to see him, we were able to know more of him and to have the knowledge of him, but still we're not able to recognize his voice. And that's why a lot of people are confused. Which is the right way, which is the wrong way? And people, they, are, they justify things now. And this is actually the, one of the tricks of the devil these days. They, he plays in our head because we think very well. 
because of the generations that we are in, the technology, all the advanced like in the learning methods, of course, will justify a lot of actions and deeds in my life. But again, do I have the receptors or not? And not only the receptors in just recognizing God's voice, the receptors to feel his presence in prayer. Many people, they say, I pray, but I feel I'm praying to the wall. What a shame. Because they don't have the receptors to feel God's presence. And even during the Mass, we should be feeling that we are in heaven. When I have the receptors that I can feel God's presence in the liturgy every time. So we need to ask the Lord to have an open ears, to feel God's presence and to listen to his word. Also, um, there is another type of ear. It's called pierced ear. In the book of Exodus, um, it says about like if the slave stays six years with his master, then after the seventh year, he has to release him and to give him the freedom. And he has rules and conditions. If he came, if he bought him with his wife and his children, they can all go. But if he came by himself and then he gave him a wife, so the wife and the children would stay, and then, you know, the, the slave can go by himself. And that's the rule. But if the slave decided not to leave his master, because he loves him. So what he should do, the master will take the slave to the judges and to go to the door and, and door posts. And then he will pierce his ear with an awl. And the slave shall serve him forever. Because of his love. So the spiritual ear here, it's, it's a type of ear that I can love the Lord, my Lord, forever. I will never leave him for a bad habit, for a sin, for any pleasures, for any desires. And that slave or that servant will serve him forever, which means he will obey him forever. That's why the spiritual ears, that's the ears of obedience. I need to obey him every time, whatever he says to me, without questioning. Why? Because this is really important for me, that I serve him with complete humility and obedience, with love and faith and trust in him. And this is even the servants or the slaves they used to do this to their masters. How about us? When the Lord has given us the freedom, the spiritual freedom, and we are able to show all our love and our faith and trust in him, do I obey him or not? Or I will forsake him and I will reject him at any stage as long as he doesn't, he didn't give me what I want. So the spiritual ears here, it should be pierced, pierced for him and dedicated to him. Also, there's a type of spiritual ears, it's called circumcised ear. Okay, why? Because St. Stephen, before, um, um, like he was martyred, um, he talked to the people of Israel because they were stiff-necked. And he said to, to them, you are uncircumcised in the heart and the ear. And the circumcised ears, he means, the ear is dedicated only to the Lord. I cannot hear anything from outside. I cannot hear the voice of the world. I cannot hear, like you know, the voice of Satan. I cannot hear any voice will take my dedication, I my consecration um, from me. That's why it is circumcised ear, which is consecrated ear. I can hear only the, the word of God. I can hear only the spiritual stuff. 
a lot of teenagers, they have trouble in that. And I don't want to say many youth, but some of the youth, they justify these as well. So I can hear anything and I can decide. But by deciding through hearing, what you're going to do, your ear will become a rubbish bin at the end. You will take anything wrong okay, inside, and then you will never be able to cleanse the ear. That's why another type of spiritual leader is the discerning ear, an ear with discernment. So I can know what is right, what is wrong, and what is good for me, and what is not good for me. And every time I can, whatever I hear, I listen to it very carefully, and I can decide, this is not for me, this is wrong. If I talk about um, inappropriate stuff, this is not me. I need to leave. I need to stop. I need to block my ear. And this is something as well for the parents. It is a responsibility to teach their kids what, what to do in these cases. A lot of kids now, they are exposed to many evil things around them, and we need to teach them. But I would say to you, if the parents, they have developed the spiritual ears with the right intention to learn more about God and to get to know him in a personal level, the kids, they can see that and they're going to develop this as well in, in their spiritual life. And then this is the way how people, they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the more that uh, my ear is open, the more it is pierced and dedicated to the Lord, the more that it is circumcised, the more it has the, like in the virtue of discernment, for sure the Holy Spirit will come and fill me. And once I'll be filled with the Holy Spirit, it's a different, like, you know, state of spirituality altogether. And that's why we need to develop these ears. Elizabeth had an open ear. Elizabeth recognized that greeting of St. Mary. It's not an any type of greeting. Recognized how the Holy Spirit worked in her womb. Recognized that she was filled with the Holy Spirit and praised St. Mary. So we need to have these type of ears in our life. A lot of stories in, in, in the Bible, a lot of stories in, in, in the history of the church, they, for those people, those people, some of them rejected, you know, the voice of God. And they have listened to, to the uh, Satan, like Adam and Eve and Judas, Iscariot, and all those people, they had, you know, Satan in their ears. But at the, in, in the other side, the holy apostles heard the word. And, and like Mary uh, and, and Lazarus' sister, she used to hear the word of God, okay, from our Lord, and also in the history of the church, St. Anthony, when he was in the church and he has heard, you know, the word of God, okay, he listened carefully and he had open ears to it. And the more that he listened, the more that he can direct himself. Even in the story of St. Anthony, when he used to go to the village and to worship God around the village, and then some, a lady was swimming in the lake and he asked her, how come you do this in front of a monk? He said, if you are a monk, go to the deeper desert. And he said, this is from God. Why? Because he had an open ears. He had the receptors to listen to God's word. And through this, he became the father of all the monks and nuns. And this is how we can hear. So I can hear the word of God and I can hear you know, what God wants to do for me, not only from the Bible or the sermon or to, during the liturgy, but also from anyone, as long as I have the four types of, um, of spiritual ease together, can work the best for me. May our Lord Jesus Christ help every one of us to develop the spiritual ears so we can learn more about him and to develop the right knowledge and listen to him and recognize his voice Glory be to God for even ever. Thank you, Lord.